Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Katie Gores, and I'm a senior at Walter Payton College Prep. Hi, I'm Andrew Kello, and I'm also a senior at Walter Payton College Prep. Yeah, we're high schoolers. Woo! <laughs> So we're very excited to be here talking for you guys today. Yes, so um, we all came here today to talk about one theme, and that theme is contrast. So uh, what is contrast, Katie? Good question, Andrew. What is contrast? Well, to us, contrast means to be vibrant, to be active, and to be dynamic. And the world we live in is incredibly dynamic. You know, people are always changing, our environments are never, are never static. And so it's not a surprise then that the solutions we must build these days have to be just as, if not more, comprehensive and flexible and as dynamic as the problems they hope to combat. So one solution involves focusing on the power of the individual. What individuals, regardless of background or education, can do to help solve these pressing problems. Too often, we rely entirely on the experts to solve problems for us. But this is an ideology that we simply cannot afford. We, as individuals, are not fully aware of the power that we can have to change the world. Just look at every presenter that you've listened to today. They've all made a positive impact on the world through their actions. But, all of today's problems are simply too large, complex, and multifaceted for a select few group of experts to be able to solve completely. Let's take a look at global climate change, for example. Climate change is an incredibly real and incredibly relevant issue that millions, if not billions, of, pe of people are aware of. Yet, despite this awareness, carbon dioxide levels have continued to rise over the past years, and experts alone are not capable of implementing a sufficient solution to this problem. Another issue is that of the energy crisis. You know, despite leaps and bounds made in the fields of alternative energy, our society is still heavily dependent on fossil fuels. So, to reduce our own carbon footprint, we, as individuals, you and me, must take actions to be part of the solution, because our actions directly contribute to the problem. And the severity of issues such as global climate change can't be reduced by one all-encompassing miracle solution. Instead, they can be solved with simple yet effective changes that, when practiced by everybody, can solve the problem. And so what we want people to do is to realize their power as an individual, and in addition, to then realize that they have a responsibility to use this power to make a positive impact on society. You know, just as Ms. Siegel said this morning, and just as Uncle Ben said to Spider-Man once, with great power comes great responsibility. So that's what we're trying to get people to do. So you might be wondering <laughs> how two goofball teenagers like us got involved in engineering. Well, Ever since I was a kid, I've wanted to be everything from an astronaut to a marine biologist. But then one day during my eighth grade year, my father had a stroke. And it was this event that inspired me to study the mind and the nervous system in the hopes that someday I'll be able to help people like my father recover quickly and return to their everyday lives. And well, ever since I've been young, my family has always been incredibly involved in our cultural and our natural surroundings. We love to go to museums, love to go hiking, and so from a very young age, I've always been surrounded completely by the world and its wonders. And so this has instilled within me a love for the sciences because I've always wanted to know how these wonders around me worked. In addition, my family has always been providing me with the best childhood possible. I've always known I've been loved and supported, and this has engendered within me a love for other people and for the community. Um, one day, my father was able to convince me to go to a summer camp to at least try to understand what engineering was about. And on day one, I just fell in love. So engineering allowed me to pursue my interests in the sciences while also actively giving back to other people. So as you can see, both Andrew and I experienced, had specific experiences and specific people to help us become interested in engineering. So you can imagine our surprise when we came upon a troubling statistic. According to recent surveys, including one called the Lemelson MIT Invention Index, 60% of young adults aged 16 to 25 don't plan on going into STEM, which stands for Science, Technology, Engineering, or Mathematics. And out of this group of 60%, 95% say that the reason they don't want to go into STEM is because either A, they don't know much about the fields, B, believe STEM fields to be too challenging, or C, think that they hadn't been prepared in school to work in these fields. So, Naturally, we wondered why. And we thought maybe the reason was that most people don't have the experiences that Katie and I had to promote them to go into engineering or STEM. So, in order to figure out why, we went to different schools and park districts across the city of Chicago, and we asked random kids aged 8 to 14 what they wanted to be when they grew up, 
and what they thought about STEM and engineering. And so we compiled their responses into a short video for you guys to watch. What do you want to be when you grow up? Probably a soccer player. Um, maybe a pro athlete. Chemist? I want to be an Olympics. Uh, I want to be a soccer player. An artist, maybe. I want to be an engineer like my dad, or a professional sports player. Well, it's a combination. I want to be an actress, a singer, a uh, oh, professional dancer, and if not, I want to start doing like photography or something. Uh, I want to be a policeman, a doctor, a lawyer. I don't know, a teacher. Pro athlete. I mean, geologist. Baseball player. I want to study law. A soldier. Um, a vegetarian. A vegetarian? I like animals and I like to take care of them. Oh, so you, and so you want to be a vegetarian? Yes. Oh, okay, wonderful. Science. What's your favorite subject in school? Uh, um, science. Uh, art. Uh, science. Writing. Uh, I like science. 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 Yeah. Math. Um, science. Reading. Does research count? Just I say reading. Math. Probably math. Science is actually pretty fun. Science. Or math. Either science, um, or math. Math. Um, music. My favorite subject is math. Math. My favorite subject is math. 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 Do you know what engineering is? Um, when you work on a car? I think it's fixing. It's like, um, it's like a motor. Do you know what an engineer is? No? Do you know what engineering is? No, like, I'm not sure. I don't know, I just invent stuff, technical stuff. Do you know what engineering is? Um, well, the first thing that pops in my mind is probably like, like uh, fixing stuff or like building stuff. They fix things. I know it has to do a lot with math and stuff like that. Maybe some science too. Do you know what engineering is? Mm, you work for like for the cars? I don't know, I guess. Do you know what engineering is? No. Do you, do you know what engineers do? No. Do you want to give a guess? No. No, not even a guess. <laughs> okay, that's fine. Do you know what engineering is? Um, isn't it like fixing stuff? To so fix cars? Like build cars? Engineers invent things, they help, they make new things. Do you know what engineers do? No, I do not. So, as you guys can see, over 80% of these children chose math or science as their favorite subject, and yet none of them knew what STEM fields were. Over 80% of them were thinking about going into anything other than engineering and STEM fields when they got older, and almost all of them thought that engineers had the same work as a car mechanic. And this is simply wrong when in today's fields, when today's STEM professionals are biomedical engineers, chemical engineers, structural, material, geotechnical engineers, and really just so much more. And so what we learned from the su survey was that um, children love math and science, and they the potential to love engineering as well, but they, engineering isn't even on the radars. The 60% of young adults didn't want to go into engineering, not because they didn't like engineering, but because they simply hadn't had the experience of that allowed them to really discover what engineering was about and what engineers can do. So, in the summer of 2011, we were lucky enough to be part of the inaugural class of the IIT Boeing Scholars Academy. And what the Academy allowed us to do was to explore engineering and its careers through hands-on, project-based workshops and field trips throughout the summer and the school year. We loved it so much that we decided to extend the same opportunities given to us through the Academy to middle schoolers in the hopes that by exposing them to engineering at a young age, they would be able to, or they would be inspired to enter engineering or STEM fields, or at least know what STEM fields are all about. So, with a lot of help from the Boeing Scholars Academy and with the help of our fellow Boeing Scholars, we created ROOTS, which stands for Rising Over Obstacles Through STEM. It's an after-school program that meets weekly to inspire fifth through eighth graders and expose them to STEM with a focus on engineering and the applied sciences. So, every week a, a group of around Nine of us convene from all across the Chicagoland area to talk about our budget, create marketing plans, and create original lesson plans for our root schools. 
Yes, and all of our lesson plans revolve around a STEM-related concept of our choosing and are always very hands-on, very project-based, and I like to emphasize teamwork because engineering itself is a very active, very collaborative, and important to today's talk, very dynamic field. Um, we also make sure to try to connect all of our lessons to a real-world problem. And th we do this because as enthralling as centripetal force or a geothermal energy might be to me, Amy or Andrew, what really inspires, really engages young people is connecting these concepts to the real world. So that is why we do that. Um, one of our favorite lesson plans is the prototyping and communication lesson plan. And here we try to focus on design thinking and communication via prototyping. So what we did is that we had kids brainstorm problems that they faced every day, and we then provided them with a framework to design and then build prototypes of their solutions. And then they then marketed their solutions to the rest of the class. Also, we're, with the thanks to the Itamoy Scholars Academy, we've been able to secure almost $2,000 in grant funding. And with this money, we were able to buy materials to make lessons like these possible in schools all over the Chicagoland area. So, from the start of Roots last year to the end of this one, we will have taught an entire 14-week Roots curriculum to over 85 kids and have doubled from two to four schools in the process. <laughs> now, just recently, we finished up our se uh, semester at my neighborhood elementary school, Helen C. Pierce, and I have a little story to tell you guys that I think really represents how much the kids love our program. So, every Monday, myself and two of my fellow Boeing scholars would travel to Pierce to teach a lesson plan. And one Monday, one of our students came up to me and he said, the only reason I enjoy coming to school on a Monday is so that I can come to Roots afterwards. What really is wonderful is that the kids aren't the only ones who benefit from Roots as well, but we benefit from the program as well. Um, first off, in order to teach a concept, we have to know this, um, this subject inside and out, like the back of our hands. And so Roots allows us to explore engineering concepts that we're curious about, and through us pursuing our curiosity, we're able to inspire other kids to do the same. Second off, it has engendered within us a respect for teachers, because trying to keep a room of 15 middle schoolers on task for more than five minutes deserves an accolade of its own, as any adult can really say. And this has allowed us, allowed us to realize that teachers are very committed and so patient, and we admire that immensely. But I think what is most important is the fact that we aren't the only teens benefiting from Roots. Teens all over Chicago are involved with Roots as well, and they have involved their friends. So in reality, we've been able to inspire 14 kids in over 14 high schools to really be an active and direct participant in their community and to try to make that community as good as it can be. And that is something we're very proud of. So hooray for that. <laughs> so. These are our fellow Roots members, and we're very thankful to have all of them because it's not just us that make Roots possible, it's all of us. So um, our plans for now are simple. We want to create a strong foundation for Roots so that when we leave to go off to college this fall, uh, Roots will continue to impact middle, not only middle schoolers, but also high schoolers, and will grow to encompass even more schools throughout the Chicagoland area. And ultimately, we want all of us to know that they can go into engineering if they want to. But not all engineers are brilliant Albert Einsteins who scribble complicated equations on, the, on chalkboards. Instead, <laughs> they are individuals who are invested in their future and invested in society's future. They, and if, even if kids don't want to be engineers, we want to let them know that they have the, co the capability and the responsibility to try to make this crazy world we live in the best it can be. We want to promote a lifestyle full of active and inspired thinking, of doing instead of waiting. And this is an idea that is worth spreading. Thank you. Thank you.